is I'm watching TV and all of a sudden this gut wrenching terror came up from deep within my being. And I was so freaked out. I wanted to get out of my skin. There was a panic attack that I had never felt in my life. And I'm thinking, what am I doing? Why am I here? Am I crazy? And I just had to breathe through that. And then it passed. And what I came to learn at that moment is, and I say this all the time to people now, if you feel it, sit with it for 90 seconds. It will only last 90 seconds, even though it feels like an eternity, just breathe through it and it will pass. So something was coming up and it was releasing. And maybe there was a part of me that I was alone in a state. I didn't really know anyone. I had no family or friends or anything. I just made a decision to go and move. Now I've done this many times in the past that I picked up and moved to a different state, but this one was different for some reason. I wanted to talk about my books, Dancing Souls. I did a, two book signings over the weekend here in Denver, and I was just talking to people about my books and the journey and what that entailed. Now, and I just want to bring more clarity about the books to you because I also started my fourth book and Spirit told me I was going to write five more. So I keep getting more insights into this, but I want you to understand the purpose of the books, of what they were designed for and how they came about and why I am now continuing on the process. So first of all, in it all started when I got into ballroom dancing and it was a year later and I changed dance studios and I met this, um, my dance instructor, 24 at the time, and we got into dance position and it was the first time I was ever in a position with a dance partner where we were actually, our bodies were touching. As soon as I touched his body, I jumped back, all the chakras in my body went straight up and I said, what are you doing? And I was in a lot of fear because I had never experienced anything like that in my life. And he simply said, I'm getting into dance position. And I thought that may be what you did, but that's not what happened to me. Well, that started this journey. Now this is back in 2007 when all this started happening. And, and I was crazy. In my mind, I was crazy. I was in this energetic field that I had never been in. I was constantly in this whirlwind of what was going on. I was writing everything. I was looking at the tarots. I was looking at the runes. I was asking for help, trying to understand it. And by the time I would get calmed down again, I'd go see my dance instructor and I would be crazy again. So I came to the conclusion that it was him. Now, a lot of things showed up in my mind during that period of time about if you can dance with someone, you can live with them forever. That's how I looked at it. And at that time I was with my partner and we sucked, totally sucked together. He was a control freak. He tried to control me on the dance floor and I hated it because I was told that I'm independent of my partner, even though I'm working with my partner. So there was a lot of things that were going on. And that's partly why I call it dancing souls because life is a dance and we dance with people all the time. And so that was part of how that name originated, even though it was given to me when I came back from Chicago on a blind date from a guy that was crazy, that was just, yeah, uh-huh, whatever. You know, when I love when you go on dating sites and somebody says that they're six feet tall and you just figure, okay, I'm going to wear my heels and they're like five, five. That was the kind of guy that gave me the name of the book. Anyways, as I continued on, with this, um, things started evolving and happening when I was, as this was going on. And I talk about the entire series of everything that was happening. I went out to Chicago. I was helping working with people. I was doing sound therapy for the first time, um, discovering so much more. And the energy that I was carrying was just unbelievable. I, nobody carries that kind of energy. And I actually had a gentleman tell me that he have he has never seen anyone hold as much energy as I could hold. And then when I give that energy to the client, 
they got like a small, tiny amount. He had never seen that. And of course, I don't know what that looked like. I just knew what it felt like. When I came back, I was ending that relationship that I was in. And as I was ending the relationship, I, um, <clears throat> I got this hit that I had to go to Chicago and go back there. Now, I didn't understand that. Part of it, I knew there was people out there that I could identify with, that I were supportive of what I was doing. But the real reason I went back to Chicago was because it was my roots. I was originally born in Cleveland, Ohio. So that's the Midwest. Chicago was just exactly like Cleveland, Ohio. I mean, you meet somebody and they are your friends. They bring you home. They love you. They're just nice and friendly. Unlike what Colorado has a tendency, which is a little bit more distant and aloof because everybody, my home is someplace else and I don't need any friends because all my friends are back home. I'm only here for a while. I mean, that's always the impression that I have gotten mainly from people in Colorado. It's, n it's not warm. It's not a warm state when it comes to people, in my personal opinion. Now, I have friends here, but it's taken a long time to make friends here. As I was <clears throat> going through Chicago and discovering this, Sal was also out there at that time. I didn't go out there for him, but the Archangel Ariel, because I was getting rid of him and not that we were an item or anything. It was, he made me crazy because um, he always ran. The Archangel Ariel told me that I don't know the whole story. And instead of making decisions based on not knowing a whole story, I need to ease up on that. That did not feel good to hear that. I didn't like hearing that. But there was a lot of truth in that because a lot of times we all make snap judgments when we shouldn't be making snap judgments, but we do. So I decided that I would take what she asked me to do because she was guiding me through all of this and I accepted it and allowed it to unfold. When I got out to Chicago, the first thing I did is I went to visit a friend of mine who was in a different part of the state. I didn't know where it was. I came back. The highway was under construction, but Chicago is always under construction, come to later learn. And I got lost. I was really lost. And I tried to act like I was brave. And the only number I had at that moment was Sal's. And I called him and he managed to guide me home. And that was the beginning of our relationship starting again. There were a lot of things that went on and I kept thinking that the books were going to be about sexual healing, that I thought it was about relationships and how men and women work together. There were so many things that were going on during this entire process. I can't even begin to tell you how much my life was changing. I was living in a vortex. There was evil all around me. I, I always thought that the landlady downstairs was in her kitchen, always moving the chair. And they went away to Wisconsin for Thanksgiving. And I kept hearing the chair move. And I realized I was not alone in that house, that it was never Mary doing this. It was somebody else doing this. Now, I didn't feel fearful or anything, but I was warned many, many, many times by spirit about the dangers of this house, that there are things living there. And I learned, came to learn it. I put a lot of protection up around me. I put a lot of protection to keep things out. Uh, there was a lot of things that went on. My cats became crazy. I became crazy. There was, there was so much. There were so many messages that were given to me during that period of time. I also discovered because we have a different mindset and we talk about mindset and growth and all sorts of things today that we did not have those words in 2008. And I remember there was one event that I was sitting at my couch. I was watching TV and I'm in a little 600 square foot apartment. Okay. This is a tiny, tiny little place, but it was perfect for me because I really needed to come back inside of myself. So what happened is I'm watching TV and all of a sudden this gut wrenching terror came up from deep within my being. And I was so freaked out. I wanted to get out of my skin. There was a panic attack that I had never felt in my life. And I'm thinking, what am I doing? Why am I here? Am I crazy? And I just had to breathe through that. And then it passed. And what I came to learn at that moment is 
and I say this all the time to people now, if you feel it, sit with it for 90 seconds. It will only last 90 seconds, even though it feels like an eternity, just breathe through it and it will pass. So something was coming up and it was releasing. And maybe there was a part of me that I was alone in a state. I didn't really know anyone. I had no family or friends or anything. I just made a decision to go and move. Now I've done this many times in the past that I picked up and moved to a different state, but this one was different for some reason. And I think part of it had to go with me. I lived in that apartment under candlelight almost the entire time. I created a haven for me and the angels to always be talking. Now in the books, I talk about everything that went on during that period of time, as far as what I was learning, what I was feeling, what I was experiencing, and Ariel had kept telling me, this is what's, this new being's coming and this, this is what's gonna happen. This is what's gonna happen. And I was bringing in, bringing the goddess energy onto the earth. I was merging um, the masculine and feminine energies together. I was bringing healing in ways I did not even understand at that point. I was rewiring my brain. I was helping people with sound therapy. I was doing so many things on levels I didn't even understand. I had ET experiences. They were in my house. I could tell Rich, the, my landlord downstairs, one day I, I said, Rich, did you hear the ETs last night? They were hovering and you could see the green lights. There was all sorts of things. I had dreams left and right in this situation. And it, it was so absolutely amazing, a little terrifying at times because, you know, when you can't move and things are happening and you don't know what to do, but I knew I was safe and I knew I was pre protected. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Your mindset shapes your reality. With Kathleen Flanagan's Mindset Blueprints, you'll learn powerful techniques to shift your thoughts, break limiting beliefs, and design a life of abundance and success. It's time to reprogram your mind for the life you truly desire. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and start building your new blueprint today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is your host, Kathleen Flanagan, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. As I was saying about in the first book, everything was right. I call it the honeymoon phase. Okay. Because when spirit first comes in, it's like, oh my God, all this stuff, there's all these miracles happening. You're feeling excited. Life is going amazing. And you just can't believe that life could be this good. And then the next year, pretty much on January 1st, because the energy changes with the years. I went into the dark night of the soul. It was the beginning. It wasn't the depths of the soul, but it was the beginning that everything shifted and changed. And what that actually really represents <clears throat> is all that light was going into the deeper, darker recesses of my being to bring light and understanding to what was down there hiding that needed to be released. So I became very well, uh, very familiar with what I was thinking, how I was feeling. I was talking to people all the time, trying to understand what was going on up here, trying to learn what I was thinking and feeling. I started discovering the lies that were being perpetuated on me. I had my mother um, got so angry at me because I thought she would be really proud of me that I made a decision to move away. And I put my big girl panties on and, you know, and I'm thinking, wow, this, she'll be proud of me. And she got so mad at me, she hung up on me. And I'm like, whoa, that went well. Happy birthday, mom. So, you know, it was one of those things of when we make those kind of changes, I didn't understand then what it did to my mother. What it did is that my mother no longer had control over me. That's what it represented. Now, I didn't understand that yet. It took me a little time before I realized that that's why she was so angry. That's why she hung up on me because she could no longer control me. But that was what I was also wanting to do. I was learning to find my voice. I was learning to speak. I was setting up boundaries because when I started going down this dark night of the soul, the darker energies were coming in. And I also had somebody put a spell on me and I found that out later too. 
<clears throat> I had gone to see Raymond Grace, who does the pendulum work in up in Wisconsin, and he saw it immediately and helped me to get through what I needed to get through. I did whatever precautions I had to do. I know people would think that I'm crazy during this period of time, but these are real events that happened to me. The other thing that happened during that period of time as well is there was a point that I was actually yanked out of my body and I was gone for three days. Now this took me six months before I learned about this. And this, again, all this is in the book. It took me six months before I realized what had happened, that I, I was actually in a position where I could not come back. I could choose to die that whatever I came here to do, I fulfilled it, whatever that was. So I had an opportunity to stay or I could leave. And for some crazy reason, I decided to stay. I don't know why I was crazy thinking that, but I did. But the funny part before all this happened is I went to Costco like that Friday, I think it was, or Thursday, one day before this event happened. And I automatically put, I swear, this bag of Doritos had to be this big. I mean, it was the biggest bag of Doritos I have ever seen in my life. And I put, just unconsciously put it in my cart. And then I snapped out of wherever my brain was at. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? And I went to put it back and spirit said, no, put them back in the cart. Okay. So I did. That's what I ate for a weekend. I did not shower. I did not brush my teeth. I didn't get dressed. I could make coffee because that's what I have to do. I have to have coffee. That was it. And all I ate were Doritos. I could, I did not know how to cook. I didn't know how to think. I didn't know how to do anything. I don't know what I did for three days. All I know is that on the third day, I called a friend of mine and I was hysterically crying, saying, I don't know what's going on. I'm scared. I don't know. She thought I was going to commit suicide. That's how afraid I was. I later learned that I had left my body and I was making the decision to stay or not. That's what I learned. But I also discovered during that period of time that when spirit is not in our body and we're zombie-like, it's because spirit is driving the bus. Our body doesn't drive the bus. Our body does what the spirit tells it to do. That was another big aha moment. And I'm telling this because everybody thinks our body runs us and it doesn't. If you've got sickness or illness or disease in your body, it's because of what's going on up here. What's going on up here can heal this. I was a migraine sufferer. And the last time I had a migraine and I was, I'd go down for the count. And I asked my body, I said, what are you doing? Because I had studied, I changed my diets. I didn't eat chocolate. I didn't drink. I didn't do a lot of things that would cause the migraines. And my body said, every time you got to the light, you asked me to stop you every time you got too close to the light. And I just about fell over and died. If I wasn't laying on the bed already flattened, I would, would have fallen over because I'd never expected an answer like that. And I said, thank you so much. You did an amazing job of keeping me from going into the light, but I don't need you anymore. And I haven't had a migraine since. I mean, we make vows to ourselves. It's our ego that follows us through our lifetime. The ego is who we are. So when you're making those kind of vows to yourself, you have to find them and release them. That was another part of what all this was about too, was really understanding what I brought forward into my life. Now, I didn't understand any of this yet. I'm just writing about the emotional side of what this is because those books are about emotional healing. We do not heal until we heal emotionally. And that's the bottom line. We create through our emotions. We heal through our emotions. We get sick through our emotions. Everything we do is through our emotions. So as long as you want to keep stuffing anger and frustration and rage and envy and all the so-called dark emotions, then you're going to be a very sick person. You have to start looking at those emotions and owning them and loving them and letting them go. They're just an emotion. We're the ones that put judgment on them. You stop putting a judgment on your emotion and allow it to express itself. It's going to leave 90 seconds, 90 seconds. That's really the truth of it. So as I was going through all this darkness going on, 
in Chicago, I had to keep people away from me and people were, got very angry at me, to be quite honest with you. They got very angry with me because I shut down, I withdrew, I became more of a hermit. And part of it was I was trying to protect people from, so they wouldn't get caught up in what was happening around me. And they would have, go to psychics and they, they would say, leave her alone. She's protecting you. So um, they came back and the re our, my relationships with all those people pretty much ended when I came back to Colorado. Part of it was when my mother died, they didn't know how to deal with it because they looked at me as a rock of Gibraltar. And if the rock of Gibraltar is falling, guess what? That means I am definitely crashing. And they couldn't handle it because they couldn't handle the death of anything that happened around them. If their sister or their mother or their partner, whatever, they, they were in denial of death around them. So why would they handle death of my mother? And I was in the throes of it. But also when I came back was the beginning of book three, where I went even darker. And there were things that were coming out about dark forces on the planet, about the wars in the heavens, because we're having wars down here too. And whatever's going on up there is happening down here as well. And I had to look at that. And yes, I look crazy. I sounded crazy, but I was not crazy. It almost killed me. And when spirit showed me after the books were written and I was sitting on my front porch and spirit showed me as destiny in a hospital room with my light body full of holes and all these so-called emergency people were trying to help save me and fill my holes. And I'm like, oh, did I almost die? Duh. I see that today, and yes, I almost died. I did not know I was in critical, in a critical situation. I, I mean, I knew I wanted to die. I knew I didn't want to be here anymore. I could barely hold my head up anymore. I, I had never felt so dark in my life as I did. And I had so much opposition running against me and people trying to kill me and hurt me and harm me in whatever way they could. And all I, and they tried to tell me I was crazy because that's like a real sensitive thing with me coming with the family that I have. So I was very sensitive to certain things and I kept going deeper and deeper and deeper because I knew, I knew, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that there was something better in there than what people were telling me. And I kept going and going and going and going deeper. And then I found it. The minute I found my light, everything changed. I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't know who, what I thought. I didn't know how I felt. I didn't know anything because this facade was gone. This is an illusion and a lie. This in here was real. And I didn't know what that meant inside of here. Now, when I started putting the books together, when I came back, the whole first part was dictated by somebody. They told me my story and I'm just going, really, 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 this is far fetched. I believe that because of just the way it was downloaded to me, the way I experienced that. And then the questions that I had to answer for myself, because I didn't know what, what did destiny decide to do? Why did she allow herself to be erased? What questions did she ask that she would allow herself to be permanently erased of who she was to go into a very dark race, trying to destroy the earth because of the mission I chose to do on behalf of the creator who does that. And what was I told in that first part of the book? If anyone could find their way back, it would be me. And I would be alone. I would be isolated and nobody could help me unless I asked and until I could remember who I was. So yes, I had a lot of special dispensation throughout my life. I mean, so many things that happened in my life prior to all of this in my twenties and thirties and forties, all of it made sense. Every bit of my life started to make sense when I, when I read this part or was dictated the first part of the book 
it made sense. Does it make people think I'm crazy? Yeah. What do I care? No. I just remember who I am because at the same time, when my mother died, there was a part of me that saw the true magnificence of who I was. And do you know how much that scared me? I am no small being people. I know who I am and I know when I emerge. So when I was in Cabo San Lucas and they told me that I released first cause, I knew exactly what that meant. There are changes that are occurring in my life in ways that I can't even begin to tell you. But I will tell you that a little bit more when we come back after this commercial break. Are you ready to step into your true potential? Kathleen Flanagan's Get Into Alignment session helps you break through blocks, balance your energy, and align with your highest self. Experience clarity, purpose, and flow like never before. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and unlock the power of living in alignment today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. So where I want to go now is I had been getting an inkling that I was going to be writing another book. I didn't know what that was. And, you know, there was an exasperation around that because of what the first three books entailed. I know it's not going to be the same. And I also understand now that I'm writing five more books, not just one. I'm writing five. I actually started the fourth book. And what this is, is going to be, again, a manual, a guide to show you that when you come out on the other side and you are woken up into the spiritual light being that you are, yes, you're still having a human experience and yes, you're still going to do certain things, but there's still elements within your psyche that are not the same anymore. And I'm going to show you how to come back from that. Now, I'm not sure exactly how all of this is working, but spirit is definitely demonstrating to me what is going to be coming out. So like I always say, when I, when I came back to Colorado and I was coming back from the death of my mother and coming back that my life was starting to turn around, all I could say was thank you that I was back in Colorado because that was the only thing I knew to do because I didn't feel like I had tools in my tool belt at that point because it, it was like my whole mind was erased. And it was, at one point it was. And, and I watched myself as I said, you know, thank you for the blue skies and thank you for warm weather and thank you for whatever it was. And then I could get back into ballroom dancing, which then was a huge shift and jump and leap into what it was. But I also discovered during that period of time that when I came back into my body, I was having to learn how to crawl and to walk and to become an adolescence and a young adult. I mean, a very accelerated rate. It was very accelerated, but it was like, there was this emotional part of me that was very young and immature when I came back into my body that way. So part of it was disassociation. Part of it was waking up and remembering who I was. What I did know at the time when all of that went, I was shown who I was and I unfurled my wings in a way that I couldn't believe. And I was shown things and, and there are things I will, I may write in the book. I don't tell people some of the stuff that was given to me, especially around the death experience because people won't believe it. And that's okay because I believe it because I have witnessed it. I experienced it and I know it to be true that may or may not show up in a book down the road. I don't know. I don't know where spirit's going to take me with the books. All I know is that I'm going to show people how to come out. Our world is in, our world is changing so drastically and there is so much fear in our world right now. These books were designed for this time. So even though I wrote them in 2008 and thought I ran out of time, I did not run out of any time. I am just was 20 years ahead of schedule, which is everything that I do in my life. I'm always 20 years ahead because I am a leader. I am a way shower. I'm leading the way. I can take you home. I know how to take you home. And now I'm giving tools and how to take you home because spirit is guiding me in those, in 
in the application of that. The main thing that we have to do right now is we need to take our power back. What is happening outside our world with the governments, with the economy, with, with corporate greed, with bullying, with all of that, these are lost, hurt parts of ourself that something was missing and lacking as a child. And what do we do? We react, we respond, we're trying to create like if you didn't feel like you received love, you're doing everything or you're showing anger to keep people away because you're hurting so badly. This is time to put all that aside and go inside and start healing those aspects of you. That's what these books were about. It's a game changer and it sucks to be you. Trust me, it sucks to be in those places. But the thing is, is that we live in a world where there are so many people that have owned that part of themselves that can help you navigate through those dark, murky waters. You don't have to do this alone anymore. I met people at the book signings because I have aligned with my books because I, I didn't want to deal with my books for the longest time. I didn't want to pub publish them. I didn't want to do any of it. It was too personal of a story. And it reminded me of all the pain and suffering I had been in in my life. And I didn't want to deal with it. I'm at peace with that now. I am in total alignment with my books. I'm in total alignment with myself. And I go into a bookstore and do book signings. People are either drawn to my books or they're not. And I don't care. But those that are drawn to my books, what are they saying? They're talking about the dark night of the soul. They're talking about that they feel alone and isolated. They feel that there's something bigger coming in that they don't know how to handle. And what do I do? I talk to them. Reach out. You don't have to navigate this alone. When I say I can go into the pits of hell and drag, pull you out, I can do that. The movie, What Dreams May Come with Robin Williams, that is a very true story. I tell that to people all the time. It's one of my favorite movies because when you commit suicide, that's where you go because it's all up here. You're in the darkness. When you commit suicide, you are in that darkness. You go with you. It doesn't change the outside because it's all internal. And it takes love to bring somebody back. When you can go into the dark recesses of yourself and see who you truly are, the true magnificent being that you are, you change. You can love, you can show compassion, you can be empathetic. You're willing to go out of your way a little bit more so nobody else has to suffer because nobody deserves to suffer that way. When you can start showing that, that's what's going to flip the world when we start changing and we become a better version of who we are. I decided I wanted to be this magnificent being. And when I said I saw her in March and she came in, she did. My future self, my higher self, whatever you want to call it, I know it was my higher self because of the energy around it. So now I'm sitting here going, okay, well, let's go up. Who's above her? I want her. I don't know what that looks like, but that's what I'm striving for to be the best version of myself. I'm coming out and doing things that I normally wouldn't do. The first time I did the book signings back in April, May, I came home, I was flattened for three days. I had no energy. I did not know how to deal with that because I expended so much energy and I was terrified. I barely got anybody. I barely talked to anybody. I barely got anyone on my email list because I was terrified. I went out there. Now I go out there and it's like game changer. It's like, I'm talking to everybody. I have no issue talking to people. It's like, here's my mailing list. Here's my podcast. Would you like to listen to my podcast? And they're like, yes, yes, yes. And what changed me, my outlook, my thinking, my feeling, I got into alignment. I can help you with getting into alignment. Once you're in alignment, you're in alignment. And what's interesting is that once you get into alignment, you keep shifting and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. That's partly why I'm going to be writing more books 
So what am I doing? I'm sitting here creating another passive stream of income so I could have that working as a digital marketer so I can do the things that I need to do so I can get out there and coach and do my courses and write the books that I'm supposed to be writing and getting out there on the speaking circuits. I mean, when I think about where I was in February or even where I was a year ago, I never thought I would be in this place. And all I'm doing is changing this. I'm stopping the dialogue. I'm looking at what it is. I went inside to find my worthiness and that I am lovable. And we all are. People lied to you. And if you can come back and remember who you are and come back into that being of your true magnificence and not be afraid of it, her or him, but be with it and own it and love it. Love it into existence. Because when you start doing that, everything starts coming towards you. You start co-creating with spirit. That's a powerful place to be. I, you know, surrender eluded me my whole life. I did not know, I could not understand, I couldn't grasp that word. I know what it is now. Do what you can, stop, wait for spirit. Do what you can, stop, wait for spirit. Baby steps. Doesn't matter how small the step is, do one thing every day. When you hear that, it's like, okay, I'll believe you, but I don't know what that means. And you watch the trajectory of your life change. I don't write stories in my head. Like when I was on the show, was it last week? When I had all those events happening, when my guests canceled and it was one thing after another, after another, after another. And I could have just had a bad day and I chose not to. Do you hear that? I chose. I'm in control of my thoughts, my thoughts, my words, my actions, and my deeds. I am in control, not the, not the world. When you can start taking control of that, that's when you become a powerful, dynamic human being. Your light shines and people need your light. People need hope. I am that person. I have owned being that person. And it excites me. It still scares me a little bit, not a lot, but a little, because it's a big undertaking to take on. But it's worth it to help people. I have met people that still inspire me. That's a good thing. I, have a, I still have people out there that are ahead of me. So I can keep striving into becoming that bigger, better version of myself. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Feeling overwhelmed? Take a moment to reconnect with your inner peace. Join Kathleen Flanagan's powerful de-stress meditation designed to help you release tension, calm your mind, and restore balance. Just a few minutes can transform your day. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and start your journey to tranquility today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. I think that was pretty much what I wanted to let you guys understand and know a little bit about the books. When we're writing something, you know, because everybody, I think everybody has a book in them if they publish it or not. I think we all have something. We all have a story of some sort that we want to share. And I, I knew that they said I was going to write a trilogy, but I did not expect that this trilogy was going to be done all in one year. And they all came out at the same time. They were all published at the same time. They just published it, or I'm sorry, they all got edited at the same time. They were all done at the same time. It was just the publishing years. And the first one that came out in 2015 was The Call. And I was okay with that because that was what I call a happy story. And, and I didn't know how I felt about the others, but I just knew that when it was time, spirit would tell me. And when the second book came out was in 2020, December, 2020. And to my surprise, I actually won an award for that book too. So I was super stoked about that. 
And, and then the third book I published December of last year, and I'm going for awards on that one starting next year too. So it's a journey. And, and w when we try to describe the book, because, you know, in publishing, everything changes and we're talking that it could be like a personal fantasy because of the draconian race and all this kind of stuff that went in. So it could be like the Lord of the Rings a little bit with, you know, good against evil and just working on having more fun because one of my authors that was there that I read her books, I love her books. And she said, you know, I think you've got some stuff in your book that's going to help me with what I need to do on this next book I'm writing. And I said, well, feel free to take whatever you want. I don't have an issue with it. I know she's not going to plagiarize me or anything, but it's the concept, it's concepts. And, and I asked somebody that another author who read my book and asked him his impression of it. And he said, the call, and he said, it's like it worms its way into your consciousness, how you write. And I said, good, that's, that's a good thing because that's what I want. I want it to do. I want it to have an impact on you, but I want it to be subtle, subtle enough for you to start that wakens your spirit up. And everything that I do in my life is all around the journey of an awakening spirit. I have a business, Awakening Spirit. It was an aromatherapy company. I didn't know what. I created that name in 1995, okay? I mean, I didn't have any clue what this was going to be. And it went through a lot of changes before I settled in on aromatherapy. And then who knew that I was going to have a podcast called The Journey of an Awakening Spirit? Who knew that my books were The Journey of an Awakening Spirit? My course is Soul Journey, okay? <laughs> I mean, it, it, but that's who I am. And so that is like a total alignment. So when you get into alignment with yourself like that, that's when things, that's when the magic starts happening in your life. Sal came into my life because he was a good man. It was the first man I ever met that was not a bad person. And I'm not talking about other women's good husbands. I'm talking about someone for me because I always picked up the abusers, always, always. My father, I could tell you who they were in wherever from my father, every single one of them. This one with Sal, I mean, I know who he is with my father in that element, but it's not like the bad side of my father. It was probably what he was when my dad, before he got crazy. I mean, he was still sick, but the whole point is, is that it's somebody that I'm growing and flourishing and flying higher than I have ever felt in my life because Sal keeps me grounded. He, he, he plants me so I can go out there and soar in the ethers and I know my way back. How many other men said they would do that for me and then they go off and meditate and somebody's got to keep a tr hold on them because you can't just go out in the ethers and you, there's nobody there to bring you back if you get too far out there because you can get lost. There's darkness out there. There's things that can happen to you out there and I know that to be true too. I haven't talked about most of this stuff yet because there's so much stuff. There is so much stuff that people, it's not a game out there, okay? Darkness does exist. We live in a polar, polarized world. There is darkness, there is light. It's just how we perceive it but it's real. When they say there's something dark and evil and negative, it is. And you can have the same spiritual awakening through darkness as you can through light. I experienced that by reading a book. It's just how we judge things. We put the judgment on. We put the energy on it. We create the world that we want to create the way we create our world. No one else. Your world revolves around you and it's a true statement. But when do you take the blinders off and start looking at that there's a world outside of you? And when you do that, I guarantee you your life will change. More money, more love, more freedom, more power, more everything. Well, that's all I have to say today. And I really do appreciate all of you coming on and listening. If you like anything that I said, I would really love it if you would like and subscribe to the show and feel free to drop a comment in the book. I would love to pick up a dialogue 
If you're struggling with anything I talked about, feel free again to reach out to me at Brave TV at KathleenMFlanagan.com and we can have a conversation and get, you know, help you navigate through whatever you may be going through. My books, Dancing Souls, The Call, The Dark Night of the Soul, and Awakened are available on Amazon.com and KathleenMFlanagan.com. Be sure to visit Awakening Spirit for the 40% discount and Grandma's Natural Remedies.net for the 20% discount. And just all you have to do is enter Brave TV and those will automatically reflect. And I will see all of you next Tuesday at 4 p.m. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.